we're trying to look at the difference between two proportions. Basically, we're trying to determine if either two proportions equal each other or you know, one is greater than the other, that sort of thing. Or if we're looking at the confidence interval for the difference of two proportions, we need to be familiar with the sampling distributions of P1 hat minus P2 hat. The uh, subscript 1 and or 2 that follows the value will refer to population 1 for 1 and population 2 when you see a 2. So P1 hat is equal to X1 over N1, or basically the first sample proportion or the sample proportion from the first distribution or the first population will equal the number of successes from that try, X1, out of the total number of observations from that population, N1, and similar with the proportion for 2. So intuitively we can figure out that the mean mu of P1 hat minus P2 hat should be P1 minus P2. The mean of the first proportion should be P1. The mean of the second proportion should be P2. The standard deviation is slightly less intuitive. It's going to be this uh, standard deviation of basically the two variances added together. So P1 times Q1 over N1 plus P2 times Q2 over N2. We take the square root of the whole thing to find the standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat. Now P1 hat minus P2 hat will be our point estimator and this big guy right here, the standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat, will be our standard deviation. Conditions for both the hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Certainly we need uh, independent samples. We have to take a random sample from each target population. Now for the values of n to be sufficiently large, the same criteria that we use for one sample will work, only it needs to work for both of the samples. So n times p and n times q have to be greater than or equal to 15 for each of the different samples. So for, uh, for sample 1 and for sample 2. Now our confidence interval, I've got it set up as lower bound and upper bar, bound, but you can simply have you know, combine it into one and instead of a minus and a plus, you put the plus minus, whatever you want. Again, it's our point estimator. So mu of p1 hat minus p2 hat, which is just or mu, mu of p1 minus p2, which is p1 hat minus p2 hat, uh, plus or minus the critical value. It's going to be large enough, so we're going to get to use the z of alpha divided by 2, since we're cutting alpha in half, times the standard deviation. That's going to be our confidence interval. Now when doing testing, the testing is going to work the same way as all the other testing does. We're going to need to calculate a null and alternative hypothesis. We're going to need a test statistic. That is this right here. And we're going to need a rejection region. Now, we have the point estimator here, P1 hat minus P2 hat. I could write the minus zero, but again, that's typically redundant. We're not usually determining whether or not two proportions differ by a certain amount. We're looking to determine if they're equal or not. And the standard deviation, since uh, before we have substituted uh, P1 hat and P2 hat in the previous confidence interval, here we're going to have a proposed value, and we're going to want to uh, pool the, uh, the proportions. So how we pool the proportions is we add up each of the successes, the number of successful uh, values in the first population, the number from the second, or sample I should say, over N1 plus N2. So this will do something like a, basically it'll it'll weight the different proportions. Say you're in a situation where um, that you take a trip with a, a, a school trip and 50% of the males enjoyed the trip and 70% of the females enjoyed the trip. In order to determine what the actual proportion of people uh, enjoy the trip, you'd need to have the n values for each. Now, you can't just simply average out those two proportions and say 60% of the people enjoy the trip, unless, of course, you know that the n values are the same. If you have substantially more females there, the, the proportion will be closer to 0.7, and 
vice versa. If you've got more males, it'll be closer to 0.5. So this is what we do to pool those proportions. And this is our test statistic. <laughs> the hypothesis test, they're going to look the same as they have in pretty much every other thing. We're looking at the null using the equal to sign. So we're looking for the proportion from uh, the first population to be equal to the second population in all three cases. And our alternative hypothesis, we have the doesn't equal, the first one less than the second, and then the first one greater than the second, depending upon what it is we're looking for. Now the test statistic that I just showed you has got to be compared to a rejection region. For a two-tailed test, you have two critical values. You just uh, you take the inverse norm of alpha divided by two, and you have two sides. If it falls below the lower one or above the upper one, then we're rejecting. If it's strictly less than or strictly greater than, we have a left-tailed or right-tailed test or a one-tailed test. For the left-tailed, if, if our critical value is above the test statistic, or basically our test statistic is below the negative z of alpha value, then we'll reject. Conversely, for the right tail, if our test statistic is above the critical value z of alpha, we will reject. In all of the cases, we will fail to reject the null. And finally, our p-value method is the same as it always has been. If our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we will reject the null. If it's greater than alpha, we will fail to reject the null. When you run the test on the calculator, it will give you both the test statistic and the p-value. So you should be able to calculate the conclusion from there.